Welcome to the Indie Film Muscle Podcast, episode number 238. Movie making is telling a story with the best technology at your disposal. Tom Hanks. Broadcasting from the back alley in Hollywood, it's the Indie Film Hustle Podcast, where we show you how to survive and thrive as an indie filmmaker in the jungles of the film biz. And here's your host, Alex Ferrari. Welcome, my indie film hustlers, to another episode of the Indie Film Hustle Podcast. I am your humble host, Alex Ferrari. Today's episode is brought to you by Blackbox. Blackbox is a new platform and community that is all about financial freedom for filmmakers like you. If you join Blackbox, you will be transformed from being a worker to being a maker of your own content. And you'll be making steady passive income from the global market. Blackbox currently allows you to upload your stock footage once, get it to many global agencies, and then allows you to share that passive income stream with your collaborators. Whether you want to submit old footage that's been sitting around in your hard drives or create brand new content, Blackbox is for you. It's really quite revolutionary. With Blackbox, filmmakers can concentrate on making great content while Blackbox takes care of all the business BS. Just visit www.blackbox.global to find out more. Today's show is also sponsored by Studio Unknown. Studio Unknown is a crack team of audio post professionals known for quality sound on any indie budget. Whether you need a lush surround sound mix or a quick festival submission pass, Studio Unknown can help you with all of your post sound needs, from sound design and mix to Foley, ADR, and even a custom score. Contact Studio Unknown and mention the Indie Film Muscle podcast, and you'll get 50% off one day of ADR or 10% off your complete post sound package. Just go to studiounknown.com. Now, have you ever wondered how you can make money actually selling your short films or, or getting short films out there, or if there's even money to be made in short films? I am one of the rare examples of someone who made not only a little bit of money, but a lot of money and still making money with short films that I've done in the past. Now, those were different times, different uh, moments in time where you can make certain types of money with short films. Uh, But I still was able to figure out a couple things. But the one thing I always wanted to do is get my films up online. And nowadays you can do that through uh, companies like Distributor and other aggregators. But... Uh, the one place that you had to before get on to be able to get your movies up on iTunes uh, or Vimeo or any of those places was Shorts International. Now, Shorts International is the world's leading short film distributor. And today we have on the show the CEO and president, Carter Plitcher. And we go into the weeds about short films, about where the market is for short films, how you can make money with short films. Um, how Europe and outside of the U.S. is a huge market for short films and how you can get them there and you can make money and the value of short films in general. I always preach, I'm like, if you're going to make a movie, might as well go make a feature film. But if you're just starting out, I always suggest as well to just start shooting short films, lots of little short films first to get your get up, get some momentum going and start playing around with ideas That might be too expensive even for a micro-budget feature film. So short films have a tremendous amount of value, and they are a very respected art form around the world, and now even more so in the U.S. So without any further ado, please enjoy my conversation with Carter Pilcher. I'd like to welcome to the show Carter Pilcher, man. How are you doing, sir? Fine, Alex. Thank you for having me. It's great to be here. Thank you so much. I, I appreciate it. I know you are in Mumbai right now, and we have a 12-hour difference, so I know it's extremely late over there. So thank you for uh, jumping on and hopefully dropping some knowledge bombs on the tribe today. Fantastic. Uh, glad to be here. It's, it's, uh, it, it's, it, it's late, but not that late. <laughs> okay, good. Now, uh, tell me a little bit about Shorts International and how it, became, how it, how it came to be. And all that, because I've—I mean, I, I was a short filmmaker for a long time, and Shorts International is kind of the 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 Academy Awards, if you will, of shorts in many ways to get your your short onto that platform. So I'd love to know how I got started and 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 the whole story. Yeah, uh, I uh, honestly am a uh, w- was a um, astronautical engineer when I went finished uh, university. Mm-hmm. And uh, went and did uh, got a law degree and then practiced investment banking, mm-hmm. and uh, I really decided I couldn't, you know, and I decided that I'd always wanted to start a business, and so at one point I had enough money to try to do that, so I did, and 
we started shorts and it was way too early. We were just in, I was living in England, uh, doing investment banking Mm -hmm. and we started, uh, and I started a little company just to put shorts. It was called Brit shorts. Mm -hmm. Uh, we were putting British short films online Mm -hmm. and it was, you know, at the beginning of the internet, everything just froze. The street, the (laughs) streaming streaming (laughs) was not streaming. It was just like, uh, pictures. And audio, uh, static picture. So I, it was horrible. And the more you did in terms of uh, people watching you, the more street people that streamed streamed kind of your stuff, the more money that Akamai told, charged you. Oh, so yeah. the more po- more popular you became, the poorer you also became. So, <laughs> so I ripped through. All the money I'd made in investment banking very, very fast and said, oh, my gosh, what do I do? And, um, you know, we're a little company with, with four or five people. And uh, we uh, just started uh, building up a catalog and distributing shorts. Uh, in 2006, we built up a huge catalog uh, and we started um, uh, distributing films and selling them to TV channels, then T, you know, we weren't as successful as you are, you were with broken, but we, you know, we, we were at least staying alive. Mm -hmm. And in 2006, we started putting, uh, we, I I went out to, um, California and met with the guys in San Francisco near you, uh, at Apple and said, Hey, uh, we, we have the largest catalog of short films in the world. We'd love to put them on your platform. And they said, uh, no. <laughs> uh, <laughs> and I said, well, you know, what if we got some really famous ones? And they said, I don't know, just tell us what you mean. I said, maybe we'd done a deal that year with Sundance to promote their films. So they, I said, they said, what about if you, I got you the Sundance films? They said, Oh, Sundance, that would be interesting. And one of the guys in the meeting said, can you get us all the Academy nominated shorts? Mm-hmm. I said, I said, well, that would be so interesting. And they said, well, if you can get those to us, this was in November. If you can get us those in mm-hmm. Feb, you know, after the nominations are announced, then we'll do a deal with you for all the films. So I said, well, let's do the deal first mm-hmm. and then we'll make totally contingent if we you know don't wait to do the deal we'll do the deal first but it's contingent on us getting you the shorts on Mm -hmm. these shorts Mm -hmm. they said well okay why not well if you think you can get them i said i don't know i'm gonna try so we went trotting off (laughs) and you know no one at that point there were a few people who would go out and buy a few of the shorts and put together a theatrical compilation of a few animations Mm -hmm. and a documentary and maybe a couple of live actions and put it in a theater in New York for a week and kind of it toured festivals. It, w- it wasn't popular. It didn't have all the film. And uh, Apple said, the only way we'll do this, though, is if you give us all the films in both those two categories, animation and uh, live action. Mm-hmm. So anyway, we there. it turns out there was another company, Magnolia Pictures, who was trying to do the same thing. Mm-hmm. And... Uh, this guy who was doing it is Tom Quinn, who's now at Neon, running Neon. Okay, great company. Yeah, Tom's a great guy. And we screamed at each other. <laughs> we each got a couple of the films, so neither one of us could do the Oscar shorts release at all. Right. <laughs> we could, unless the other guy agreed. So I wanted to do the digital side. I had no idea how you do a theatrical release. Mm-hmm. And Tom only wanted to do the theatrical release. So you'd think we, but we're both very hard headed guys and both of us wanted to do all of it. Right. And we screamed at each other all of January, like till <laughs> four in the morning, until finally, uh, and Tom was at Magnolia then until finally we agreed. He'd do the, of course he'd do the, we'd get, we'd buy all the films. Mm-hmm. We would give them to him for theatrical. He provide the, the cash for the theatrical P and a mm-hmm. publicity and advertising. And we would uh, get them for digital. Uh, so we didn't trust each other. We screamed at each other a lot, but it worked. And <laughs> honestly, 
in that process, we became great, great friends. Tom is still a great friend. So we did it. We did it for three or four years together. And then uh, um, Mark Cuban, it wasn't making money in theaters, uh, told Tom that if we took it over, we could keep doing it. But they were out. Right. And so we did. And we, we took it over and at about the same time launched uh, the f- first shorts TV in fr- France mm-hmm. uh, on Numeric Cable, which is a cable system there. Mm-hmm. And uh, because we had this huge catalog and, we're, and I was pitching cable companies every week to try to get somebody to agree to let us launch a channel. Mm-hmm. And so we just launched in, launch in France. And, uh, and so since then, we've grown and distributed the channel now in Europe and also in, in the U.S. on DirecTV. And we're about to launch in India and Latin America. So, uh, so it's, it's really grown a lot. And that, so basically the, it was all, cause I remember that you were guys were the Oscar, like all the Oscars have to go through you and, and for a certain time. And I think that's still the case. If you want to get a short up on iTunes, you were the, the place it had to go through you for a certain amount of time. I'm not sure if that's still the case or not. Uh, it's not the case. It's not the, so we're the largest catalog on iTunes. And for a long, long, long time, mm-hmm. we were the only people you know, they said once they found out how nightmarish short films are, you know, every short <laughs> film is a new right. project, sure. there's, it's not a standardized thing. And they said, oh, my gosh, so you guys just handle all of it and we'll take whatever you give us. And that's kind of how it, – because it, it was hard work for all of us back then. But, yeah, we, that, that's exactly what it was like. So you were – so you arguably are the largest distributor of short films in the world. Yeah, we for sure we are. We have – uh, just on air in the U S we're showing on TV, we're showing probably 5,000 shorts in the U S and another four or 5,000 in Europe. And, uh, I was, we were trying to, between all of them, we're probably the total catalog size, uh, is probably anywhere from between in any year between six and 9,000 films. It's a lot. Jeez, that's insane. Now, let me, uh, let me ask you, how does, how do filmmakers, because I'm sure everyone listening, uh, there's a handful of short filmmakers out there. How do they submit? How do they get involved? Uh, you know, how do they, how, do, how can they get their short films to you to be even looked at? So here, here are all the, the things that are great. You know, what the, I, I was a banker a long time ago and, uh, and one of the things, uh, experiences that I've had that is like every short film maker ever, uh, whether you're a producer or director is that lo- the lovely bite of utter poverty. Um, you know, I went through, I, in this whole process before we did this deal with Apple, literally there were years, three or four years at, you know, we started with a lot of money and, and I went through it. It's paid it all to Akamai and practically almost had to close the company, you know, so, um, our, one of our big goals is making sure that, that filmmakers get paid. And it's been a slow slog, but, uh, but we're paying, we're paying filmmakers nearly a million dollars a year just in, uh, in license fees. So nobody, wow. and nobody else is and that just short filmmakers. Um, we, uh, so the way you get your film to us is you can go online to shorts.tv, mm-hmm. which is our website. And there's a submissions page and just download the, the form and fill it out and then send us Send us your film. We'd love to look at it. The other, the other thing uh, that we do, we send lots of guys. We we have four people in the U.S. that are looking at films, and uh, we have another three in Europe that mm-hmm. do the same thing. Mm-hmm. So we try to cover most festivals and 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 see most films. Now, do you, do, uh, do you acquire a film a shorts at festivals like uh, other other distributors just acquire features? Yeah, we do. Absolutely, we do. So that's what that was what I was saying. Is the other place we go is festivals. We our guys all go to the sc- festival screenings. They go to the festival to the markets and sc- go into those little boxes and screen for eight hours a day. So yeah, we we go to we do all of that. We're I'm going to Cannes. We do a, a bunch of uh, a pitch competition with the with Cannes, the film festival every mm-hmm. year. But really, the reason we go is our our acquisitions team just goes into the little vaults in the dark, sits in the dark in Cannes on the beach, you mm-hmm. know, 100 yards from the beach, and they sit in the dark eight hours a day watching short movies. God, and they don't go outside at all. 
Oh, wow. But it's, it's great uh, as a place to see films. It's a great place to see filmmakers. And, uh, and you know, it's, it's just uh, short films are really, really becoming uh, a big thing. They've been always been for anyone, whether you're a producer or director, they're, they're a great way to get your, your talent seen and whether you can tell a story or not. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, you can tell when a guy can, can tell a story in a short film and you can tell if they're going to be a good director or not. Um, the, the truth though, is that shorts have never really been that popular, but they're, but we've seen in the Oscar shorts, you know, we release the Oscar shorts theatrically every single year. Mm-hmm. And this year, uh, we had our best year ever. It's mm-hmm. in almost every, it's amazing. We have, uh, old, uh, elderly people who are really into it. We have young people go. It's a very, uh, eclectic audience and surprising audience but it's really it's especially people who like films and people who are in film school who want to see them but they see them every year and this year uh we took three and a half million at the box office which is uh for short films wow it's for shorts that's insane and that's just the North American box office in, in the U.S. We, we released them in uh, – we made in several hundred thousand more dollars. All, we released them across Europe. It's more – it's not as steady as a, a runs in Europe. But we're, we had a nice release in the Netherlands, a nice release in Germany, uh, and then small releases in lots of other countries. And now this is so, for the Oscar – these are for the Oscar uh, films? Yeah. The Oscar-nominated shorts that I started releasing with Tom – Way back in 2006, we still do it every year, mm-hmm. and it's increased every year. From the first year, the box office was less than a hundred thousand bucks, mm-hmm. and this year it was three and a half million. And uh, and that's and you know and we and each of those filmmakers, on average, last year. So this is 2018. So 2017, the filmmakers on average made took home about thirty or thirty five thousand dollars each of the nominees. That's so, and that's just from the theatrical release. Yeah. So we're getting back to the filmmakers, uh, more than 10% of the, the box office back directly being paid to the filmmakers as a whole, not, you know, not each one individually where we, you know, there it's like one motion picture, but it's, it's a great opportunity for filmmakers. Now, what, in your opinion, since you've seen, I'm, so, I'm assuming you've seen a few short films in your day. Um, <laughs> What makes what makes a good short film? Well, uh, that's a great question. I think there are a lot of different things that uh, one is uh, whether if they're going to use a hook or a or a surprise reveal at the end. Mm-hmm. Those are always a fun. It's a fun technique that works in shorts. It doesn't really work in features always. Mm-hmm. Uh, sometimes it can. But in shorts, it definitely works, and and so if that's that if if that's a good setup and it's a clever, well thought through script, that that makes a great short. Um, always an emotional connection mm-hmm. is essential. You know, uh, a well it's a well acted piece is always fantastic. Mm-hmm. Um, this year, the short that won an Oscar best uh, for best live action film was a very uh, beautiful story of a little girl who was deaf and uh, her parents her parents didn't want her to be strange so they didn't want her to learn sign language and they didn't really and it was a story about how families uh, can go through can be insensitive without re- realizing that they're being insensitive to their handicapped child. So it's a big topic. It's a, it was a big story, but it was told in a way, uh, that was very endearing and, and very moving. And short films are, are, are exceptional vehicles for moving and heart rending stories. Um, they're great too, for comedies, Mm -hmm. you know, a great short comedy. It's, uh, this year, one of the nominees was a, was a great comedy film and a great short comedy is probably in my mind better even than a feature length comedy because feature length comedies, they always have part of it where you just kind of run out of the gas. 
All right. and you have to wait, right? You have to wait till it gets to a point where you can laugh again. And a short that's funny, it, if they time it right, you just laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and laugh and then it's over. Right. And, and, and I think, I don't know, I, I, for me, that a better uh, moment, a better entertainment experience than the long, good ha ha laugh. And then kind of, you know, if you even, even a Sandra Bullock or a Melissa McCarthy film, they have great moments that are hilarious. Mm -hmm. Like the, but you know, they're very few. The only I can, and the only one that comes to mind is the, uh, brides. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Uh, Bridesmaids. Bridesmaids. It's the only one that I think of that actually made you that I've been to in a long time in years that really where I laughed from the moment I started watching that film to the end. Uh, for me, but, it was Hangover, the first Hangover when that came out. The, yeah. Oh, God. <laughs> yeah, exactly. So it's those two, but it's, it's that it's hard in a feature to get you maybe one good laugh, two mm -hmm. good, three or four good laughs. But you have a whole hour of just kind of a nice story and some laughs. It's hard to get Hangover is a great example. Hangover or Bridesmaids, that kind of you are laugh. You cannot believe what is ha happening in front of you, but a short can do it. Right. And and so for me, I, I, so I, you know, I I I started out as an astronautical engineer. I honestly am still in this business because. I think shorts are way more fun than features. I love them. I think they're inventive. I think they're amazing. It's and they're you know and they're coming from often from really the heart of the filmmaker, which I think is a fabulous, fabulous thing. Um, now, how long should a short film be? How long should a short film be? Uh, average is first. Average. Um, <laughs> Average animation that we show out of thousands of animations, average animation is under 10 minutes and normally around seven. Mm -hmm. Average uh, film uh, that we see in live action is about 15. Average film, I'm sorry, I just have all these averages, but average film that wins um, an Academy Award is about 20 to 20, uh, 18 to 22 minutes. So, um, and average Sundance winner is shorter. <laughs> <laughs> right. So there, it is an amazing thing. You kind of look at these different festivals and different prizes and different winners are at diff different lengths. Yeah. I th but I, you have to. Sorry. No, no, I, I didn't mean to cut you off. I just remember that, you know, I've, I've been to many short film festivals or festivals with shorts in and sitting, sitting down watching shorts. And sometimes, uh, you know, they just a 45 minute short. It, it's not a short anymore, in my opinion. <laughs> like, just keep going and finish it off as a feature. <laughs> Some of them are that way. But, you know, even even a 25 minute short, it's a a big and it's a big story. There was one that was nominated. You know, the nominees were all in my mind this year, but uh, or right now, um, Watu Watu was a German film. It was a big. It was actually a big story. It was probably twenty five minutes, mm -hmm. and just the idea. Um, I I like that. It's a, it's a, I, you almost feel and I and I kind of think this is where movies are headed. In in twenty five thirty minutes, it's kind of enough. It was, it's great. It's a fabulous. It's a whole story. Mm -hmm. You don't, we don't have to hang out for, for an, an, another hour. <clears throat> I, I feel that way. And, I, and I'll be totally honest with documentary features. I, I really, honestly, most of the time, I feel like I just need to go out and shoot myself <laughs> <laughs> to I get it. But a documentary short that's 30, even 30 minutes. I love it. Mm -hmm. I love it. And, you know, because I feel like I've learned something and I don't feel like I'm bogged down by hours of uh, and some of my good friends are documentary feature makers. But I like documentary shorts way better than a documentary feature. And, you know. No, no, you're saying? No, I was going to say, and, and the same is true for animations and live actions. You know, I just, I think they're a better form of entertainment. Now, our... Are there some ways that filmmakers can monetize short films if they don't get into Shorts International? <laughs> <laughs> Obviously, that's the dream for short filmmakers. It'd be great for a distributor to pick them up and, and send them a check every once in a while. That'd be great. 
But in your opinion, are there other ways that um, that film that shorts can't even be monetized in today's world? Well, you know, there is this this world YouTube which has lots and lots of promise. <laughs> yes, it's a brand new thing just showed up. Well, no, but I mean, they it the the a shooting in San Francisco pointed out the promise and the downside of the promise. Mm -hmm. And, and basically the story was the reason she went and shot people was because they, all these, uh, uh, creative lab people that they funded and were make starting to make money. They were making too much money. So they changed the algorithm and the rules. So they don't make much money. Right. And so she went and shot people, right. which is crazy. It's but insane. the point is, yeah, but YouTube is designed to help you never make money. And that's that's really YouTube. Mm -hmm. And if if you're a big uh content provider, they know they can't really exploit you and they change. But if, you know, so if you put your film, one of the big problems we see is that filmmakers um put their films online too early. Mm -hmm. Uh and, and because once a film's online, I I am unlikely to buy it. Our teams are unlikely to buy it. Uh, big channels can't buy it. You can't release it on iTunes. Uh, it becomes disqualified for lots of prizes and lots of festivals. So a short is one of those things where, that you have to somewhat nurse a little bit. If you want it to be worth something, mm -hmm. you have to kind of uh, protect its value. Mm -hmm. uh, and by that I mean you have to uh, you have to get it into the festival, spend some time getting it into festivals and getting it seen. There are you know there's film uh, is it film hub film freeway mm -hmm. and there's a, uh, without a box without a box that are great um, great assets and make it much less expensive and troublesome to submit your film. But um, it's a it it helps it, it helps you and the value of your film uh, immensely if you have won some festival prizes if you get seen on the festival circuit and you don't put it online once once you put it online you're not you know YouTube used you, people are pretty much wised up but but YouTube people used to think you could put it online and make a lot of money but you can't really mm -hmm. and uh, and it's better to to take it through the whole process and. And, uh, and it's better in terms of notoriety too, because, you know, shorts, one of the things we're, uh, working on is an app and, uh, happy to talk about that with you. But, uh, but part of the purpose is one of the things we know for viewers, people who love shorts, love watching shorts is they, what they, they will, everyone with short, any type of short content, if they have to touch their clicker more than or their phone more than once it's over they're off to something else mm -hmm. so you so you're not it's it's a very difficult sale there aren't the thing you know you mentioned uh, uh before we got on the call the fact that your film had sold a, a, a an awful lot of dvds mm -hmm. and that that method uh you know kids you have a daughter i have you know uh kids are are don't understand um really the whole idea of a dvd why right. does it have to what do you do with it where do you put it <laughs> right. um right, right. I, you know i i don't know if you had that conversation but i have and it's mm -hmm. a kind of complicated thing mm -hmm. where you try to and why why music used to be on pieces of metal <laughs> right and it wasn't in your phone and on your computer, why why does it have to be on pieces of metal that you sh carry around? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, so I, I I don't think anybody DVDs to sell them. I don't think that's a way forward. Um, so so that I, I would say um, those are the those are the main routes. Now can um, can filmmakers create a successful like studio that focuses solely on short form content and short films? Yeah, you know, I think I think so. There's lots. The great news is there's lots of money sloshing around out there looking for short form content, mm -hmm. and looking and more than that, looking for great new ideas. Every TV channel is trying to come up with some kind of digital something that is that augments what they're doing on TV. There are, are lots of opportunities. So I 
in terms of getting yourself seen, and this is where doing short form content on YouTube uh, does make sense, mm-hmm. not when you're worried about making money, mm-hmm. but when you're worried about creating an impression and getting people to know you. Uh, or and, and if it's if you're doing something shorter than and less precious, I guess, than a proper short film. But that kind of short form content, uh, whether it's gags or uh, little documentaries or, or whatever your thing is or cooking or any of those areas, those are huge, I think. And companies are putting incredible amounts of money and they're spending guys I know spending unbelievable amounts of time finding people who know how to take a camera and use it, hold it, make, say something intelligent into the camera and, 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 uh, get a, get a video, a short form video that really works. Yeah. There's a lot of uh, companies now I've seen that advertising has gone to short films now as well because of YouTube and because of online platforms where they, you know, big brands are hiring filmmakers to do a three or four minute short with their product in it. Well, even even uh, here in India, mm-hmm. um, Perno Ricard, which is one of the big alcohol brands, mm-hmm. um, has a a the most popular whiskey brand in India is called Royal Stag, mm-hmm. and they uh, and I, I it's not a brand a whiskey brand I'd ever heard of before because uh, I think it's only here in India, but the, they have launched a website where they and they they had all these stars that they are their kind of fate, you know, celebrity faces mm-hmm. and they started, they got them to do shorts. They hired directors and had them make shorts with one with each of the stars, just as a project to get their brand out there. And here in India, they got, you know, they've gotten their huge stars. They're very popular. Their movies have gotten 50, a hundred million views, wow. which India, everything's staggering, but right. for them, for them as a brand, even in India, that is has moved everybody's needle. And um, so it, it's it's also, you know, um, so I so I think brands are making more and more short form content. So getting yourself seen, if you're if you're worried about getting yourself seen and have a way to promote yourself on YouTube and you're not worried about monetizing your film, then then that's a different consideration and something to think about. No. But you know I can, if I can just say this, sure. and in in Europe, where I live in England, and and in America, where I where I came from, uh, short form watching stuff on your mobile is is great, and young kids do it all the time. But most of us, when we get home, a TV's on someplace, and we just turn on the TV, and and we and maybe uh, look at. Uh, Facebook or YouTube or something, uh, Snapchat while, while you're sitting in front of TV, but you're not really watching video on your phone as much. In places like India and Latin America, I think they're actually the future. Um, a small percentage of people, when you're speaking of the overpop- overall population, have mobile phone, uh, have TVs. Mm-hmm. Everybody has a mobile phone. Smartphones are, are everywhere, and they watch all their TV, all their TV on their phones, and they watch all short. And they and that's part of the popularity of these films that this uh, alcohol brand made is that people are watching those because on your fo- on your phone it's it's kind of irritating to have to stop all the time if you're trying to watch a movie or even a TV an hour TV show, mm-hmm. but a fifteen. 15- movie or a 12 minute movie is kind of perfect for, for transport or, or, you know, if you're just trying to take a break and watch something on your phone. Um, it's, the world is changing, I think in a faster even than the U S. No, so I was, I was going to ask you that I I know historically shorts are, are been very well accepted in Europe, much more so than in the United States, but you feel now that that's changing where people are now being more accepting of shorts as a general as a general statement? I, so I think in Europe, they were always more accepted and, and thought of as a more pure and, uh, intellectual pursuit, mm-hmm. uh, of entertainment type of, um, I think that general people, gen, young people probably in Europe are slower, uh, getting acquainted with shorts than young people in America. But I think in, 
because we're watching more and more and more and more young people first in the in, where we're you know in California and uh, and everyone in Latin America, everyone in in India, everyone in China is watching almost all content on their phone and they're all watching you know Game of Thrones in India uh, because the advertising is so big has made uh, less than 10 minute versions of Game of Thrones. Really? Just, yeah. Just as, uh, just because you can get it out to more people. That's insane. <laughs> That's insane. <laughs> now, um, are there any tips, uh, that you would, uh, give on making a successful short film? Uh, and it's, we spoke a little bit about making a good short film, but things that would like grab it. Are there any genres that specific genres that are more accepted than others? Things like that? Well, uh, it depends on what you're after. If you're winning festival prizes or getting audience, okay. if you want audience, uh, audience is horror, mm-hmm. horror, great sci-fi, a good sci-fi film. It's easier to make an audience, uh, energizing film. Mm-hmm. Um, comedies are great, uh, for, for audiences. Um, if you want, even sketch comedy is a really works. Uh, it's kind of in between a proper short film and a, and and just a short sketch, but sketch uh, comedies can be can be great ways mm-hmm. to make uh, films. Uh, if you want to want to uh, really, if really what you're trying to do is compete for prizes at festivals and become a, you know, and really you're you see yourself as a, a big director, a film director, maybe directing someday one of these big TV shows mm-hmm. or being part of those crews. I think you you want to focus on on films that tell meaningful stories, uh, and they can be comedies. They can be uh, they can be um, poignant love stories. They can be uh, thrillers. They can be hilarious. But telling a re- showing that you can deliver a great story in a short amount of time is the mark of a great filmmaker. If you look at, and this is, this I think is absolutely essential Mm -hmm. in, in thinking. If you look at the last six directors that have won five directors, uh, five of the last six directors who've won best director at the Oscars, Mm -hmm. all Quaron won it twice. Steve McQueen, uh, uh, the guy who won it, won it for Moonlight. Um, yeah, I know who you're talking about. And uh, and uh, and Guillermo del Toro and one other guy. Anyway, there are five or six directors. Did Guillermo, del, to- did Guillermo del Toro win for shorts? No, no. He oh, won no. Best for, Director. For best Director, of course. Yes, yes. All the guys have won Best Director in the last five or six years. Mm-hmm. All of them have made at least as many short films, if not more, than they've made features. Barry Jenkins made Moonlight. Yes. And Barry Jenkins had made two features and nine or 12 shorts, right? Mm-hmm. Uh, Quarone had made about the same. Uh, um, Inurito, who made, did Birdman mm-hmm. and Revenant, mm-hmm. um, almost quit filmmaking and he went off and made for a per- period of three years. He just made shorts. He made three or four shorts in a row. And then he came back and made Birdman. <laughs> so the but I think the point is about shorts is it as a director it you know for Inurito is a great way to reestablish your confidence and it it really gives you an ability to to practice distinct storytelling and a really uh it's a it's an unforgiving to do it well mm-hmm. it's a very forgiving format the other side of that is it's cheap cheaper so you can make three or four and really you know do some great practicing and you don't have people standing over your shoulder saying nope don't do that nope you have to do this right. it's a much freer environment where you really can try things out that you want that you the director want to do to play to play basically i think it's yeah play and practice mm-hmm. you know in, and in filmmaking if you get to, if you get hired on a big film and or you kind of get hired on a first small feature and it's crap you're kind of done <laughs> right. um right it, it's yeah. there's no either there are a hundred lines of guys who want to have a five million dollar budget or a ten million dollar sure. budget out 
out the door. So it's short. If you want to tell great stories, then you've got to start right away learning how to pick great scripts, pick some great actors, and really practice telling those stories in a unique way. Now, um, you talked a little bit about the Shorts International app. Can you can you tell me a little bit about that? Yeah, uh, it's called the Shorts TV app. So, it, the uh, you know we <laughs> all of this time, one thing you do learn is what people. You know, I'm a, an audience guy. I spend all my time thinking about talking to, listening, trying to figure out what people like about short, our shorts, all shorts, what they hate, what's good about a short to an audience member. Mm-hmm. And one of the things we, we, we provided these big libraries of shorts, 500 shorts at a time to these big TV cable networks that we're showing the TV channel on. And, you know, nobody ever looks because if you look at VOD on a cable system, it's really slow and you have to click, click, click. And then there are all these titles mm-hmm. you've never seen. You, all of us have been there. Mm-hmm. Um, so we, uh, the guys in Holland – uh, the cable, the big cable system in Holland that we work with, uh, came to us and said, Hey, would you design an app that goes on the set top box and makes your VOD more exciting? So we kind of rolled our eyes and they said, and if you don't do it, we're going to reduce your fee. So we said, Ooh, yeah, we really want to do that. That was really something we were just now thinking about, really excited about. <laughs> so we went off and developed it and we, Came back, but as we started developing it, it's it's really fabulous. We uh, our guys came up with an app that uh, while you're watching in the Netherlands, while you're watching our channel, you just push the red button on your on your uh, clicker, and an overlay comes over with a navigational guide, like kind of like uh, um, it's similar to Netflix, not mm-hmm. exactly the same, but mm-hmm. uh, and then you click on short, you, you can either create it, but it's a lot of Spotify functions. A lot of the watching a short film we feel Mm -hmm. is very, very similar to listening to music. So we, we've created the ability to build playlists and we call them channels. We've developed the ability to, uh, you can like a film or skip it. If you, it starts and you don't like it, you skip it and you go straight to the next film. So it's always moving and you never have to, read a title, pick a film. And we, we built it with a lot of a a very heavy machine learning capability like Spotify or Pandora. We, we, our guys actually modified that type of an algorithm so that after about 20 likes and skips, it pretty much starts really feeding you films that you like and don't like. And it learns your, it's more interactive, like a music app, uh, because just like like music, it you know you go through a title very quickly compared to a movie or a you know. right. So it comes on the T. So right now it's it's playing in the Netherlands, mm-hmm. and you it, just push the clicker. It comes over your TV channel. You can just start going through the. And we we launched it with two thousand five hundred films. Uh, we're just testing next week. Starting next week the iOS version of that that'll be on phones and it'll be, it should be out by June. That's amazing. And let me, let me tell you something. It is fantastic. It's so cool. It's, it's, I think it's revolutionary. Nobody's ever done scripted content with music type algorithms. Very, very cool. And I'm, I'm I'm glad someone out there is, is fighting for the good fight for the shorts of the world. Yeah, We're going to give everybody and we're, we're, putting and now you know we're, we're able to go and say we can create a playlist that is just a films you know the film the graduation films for blah 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 film school and put them on the app we're doing it in the netherlands and putting their graduation films on for a month so that you can go see all the graduation films and just skim through them and then you know or so it just gives you this enormous flexibility to be able to bring all kinds of new interesting content uh, to our audiences where it's, it's really, we think it's really fun. It's, it's definitely the um, viewership is, uh, it takes a while for people to get used to how to use it, but you can see, mm-hmm. uh, return viewership is very high. Uh, and the amount of time that they spend on the app is high. Very cool. Which is really great. So I'm going to give you now, uh, the speed round of questions. I ask all of my, uh, my guests. Okay. Um, what advice would you give a filmmaker wanting to break into the business today? 
uh, there's never been a better time to get into filmmaking or video anything. This is the time. So if you're even halfway thinking about it, just do it. Now, what is the lesson that took you the longest to learn, whether in the film business or in life? Wow. I know, it's pretty deep. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> pretty deep, Alex. My gosh. Okay, I would say uh, lo bit longest lesson that took the longest to learn. Uh, well, you know, some lessons you never quite learn. Uh, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> but... Uh, but probably, um, I would say, a, a hard lesson to learn has been to make sure that you you never, you know, I, I don't really understand. And I, I went through this phase when lo all our competitors uh, were, were had tons of money in the early 2000s. A company called Adam Films. Oh, yeah. Or all these other there was a company called um, Steven Spielberg was starting a company with Jeffrey Katzenberg called – uh, uh, pop.com. Yep. They spent 18 million in bucks and it all popped and it never, all of it died. So the one thing that I took away from, from those experiences, seeing that happen and going through my own little, uh, challenges is that you always stay close to you. You make money, mm -hmm. you keep money and you stay close to money. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> it sounds horrible, but it's just you don't you don't do the start your film and not have enough money to finish it. Oh God, no! Please don't do that. That's the biggest mistake you could do. Um, now, what are three of your favorite films of all time? Oh my gosh! Well, <clears throat> to be honest, I would say Saving Private Ryan is is probably one one of them. Mm -hmm. uh, for a comedy, Prince's Bride. Oh, genius movie! Yeah, it's it's just, and I can watch it endlessly. I think it's brilliant. Um, gosh, and what would be, what would a third one be? Uh, Casablanca. Good choices, all very good choices. Now, where can people find uh, you or and get more information about Schwartz? Uh, Shorts TV is probably the best place to go. Um, it's it's there and there's all everything about our website. You can go find anything you want about the company, uh, and if you uh, there's an info thing and just put my name Carter Pilcher in the uh, subject line, and it, people will shriek and run it over to my desk. <laughs> thank you, Carter. Thank you so much for uh, for talking all things shorts with us on the podcast today. Thank you so so much for your time. Yeah, Alex, thank you. It was great. It was lovely to meet you, and I look forward to meeting you in person. I want to thank Carter for being on the show. He dropped a bunch of knowledge bombs about short films, things that I didn't even know about. And uh, I'll make sure to put links to how to get a hold of Carter, how to submit things to short, uh, Shorts International, as well as links to shorts that I discuss in the episode. Just head over to IndieFilmHustle.com forward slash 238 for the show notes. And I want to thank everybody, all the Indie Film Tribe members who have gone over and start and subscribe to the Bulletproof Screenplay Podcast. It is blown up. It is amazing how fast uh, it grew, it, like almost overnight. So thank you guys so, so much. Please, if you have not subscribed, head over to screenwritingpodcast.com. And, uh, and, and and if you can, leave us a review. Leave us a five-star review and subscribe because there's a lot of amazing information on that podcast as well. And I should be doing a crossover event soon where one episode will play on both podcasts at the same time. So keep an eye out for that. And as always, keep that hustle going. Keep that dream alive. And I'll talk to you soon. Thanks for listening to the Indie Film Hustle podcast at IndieFilmHustle.com. That's I-N-D-I-E-F-I-L-M-H-U-S-T-L-E.com.